of the sensory neuron. As it comes near the nervous system, there will be a sensory neuron cell body. And then the axon of the sensory neuron will start to move in towards the nervous system. And the part of the nervous system that's involved at the level of, of a reflex arc is the spinal cord. So here we have the uh, spinal cord, very diagrammatic spinal cord. Now inside the spinal cord there's an area of uh, grey tissue which is H-shaped like this. Grey tissue. And this is the back and this is the front. of the spinal cord. And it's important to note that all impulses arriving in the spinal cord, all sensory nervous impulses, arrive through the posterior nerve root or the, the, the back nerve root, the dorsal nerve root. They come in the back way. So this impulse will go from the sensory neuron cell body along this sensory neuron axon into the back of the spinal cord where it will form a synapse. It synapses with another neuron which carries it through the spinal cord, through, through the, uh, yeah, through the spinal cord, that's right. And again, this will, this will synapse. And this neuron that's carrying it through the spinal cord is referred to as a relay neuron. Because it's carrying it through the spinal cord. So here we have the, <coughs> uh, the end part of the sensory neuron synapsing with the relay neuron. The relay neuron carrying the information across the spinal cord. And here we have the cell body of a motor neuron. And again, it's important to notice that all motor neurons leave the spinal cord via the anterior nerve root, via the front nerve root. So here we have a <coughs> motor neuron cell body, motor neuron axon, motor neuron motor end plate, and as you remember, Hopefully, this is connected to a muscle. Which will bring about some sort of movement. So what we have is a motor neuron and a sensory neuron joined together by a relay neuron. So what you could do is take more time now and draw the full diagrams of the motor and sensory neuron comprising these structures. Because they're just the same, this is the dendrite, this is the axon, this is the cell body. Of course they're surrounded by myelin sheaths. The synapse of the sensory neuron with the relay neuron. The relay neuron carrying the information through the spinal cord. The relay neuron synapsing with the cell body of the motor neuron. The motor neuron carrying this out of the spinal cord to the motor end plate, where it synapses with the muscle, causing the muscle to contract. Again, this will have myelin sheath made up of Schwann cells round about it. And uh, what's also useful in these diagrams is to draw in the direction of the impulse. It's generated here, carried along the dendrite of the sensory neuron, carried into the spinal cord, carried across the spinal cord by the relay neuron, 
carried out from the spinal cord by the motor neuron to the motor end plate where the impulse goes from the motor end plate across into the muscle. So these are the three components of a reflex arc. The sensory neuron detects some pain or some sensation in the, in the periphery. That's transmitted to the spinal cord, goes across the spinal cord with a relay neuron, leaves the spinal cord via a motor neuron, where it causes a muscle to move. And of course the clever bit is, the muscle that moves is the appropriate one to draw back the hand from whatever is hurting it. So the, 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 the reflex is appropriate to stop the tissue damage which is happening at the time. So the three components of a reflex arc. Now, at the same time as this is happening, the brain is also informed. So, although this happens automatically without our knowing, shortly after the event, we're aware of it. We know we've brought our finger back. And this is because another neuron, leaving round about here, goes up the spinal cord towards the brain to inform us that this event has happened. So we know that it's happened, but the, the, the reflex occurs first. And this is the same with all reflexes. If you tap the tendon below the knee, for example, you get a reflex response. If you flick someone's eyelashes, you get a reflex flicker of the eyelid. All these are reflexes working in, in similar ways to prevent tissue damage to the body. Now before we finish this section, let's just revise what we've said by looking at um, some other diagrams that say much the same thing, maybe in a slightly different way from the way I've said it. This first diagram is another representation of a motor neuron. Again here we see the cell body of the motor neuron. And we can see some dendrites carrying information towards the cell body. And we can also see another nerve fibre here synapsing with the cell body. Under certain conditions the cell body will generate a nervous impulse. This nervous impulse will travel down the axon here and this diagram shows diffused motor end plates but the same thing motor end plates connecting up to usually a muscle. Round about the motor neuron are Schwann cells here. And you might be able to see that each has their own nucleus because they are independent cells. The Schwann cells comprising the myelin sheath round about the motor neuron axon 